What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If you are new yet, my name is Divine. I'm a musical five, Minominak, drummer and a keyboardist. I have been for many many years. I started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Perseverance Reaction in order to recommend your favorite singers for us to react to. You can't, you can't, you can't. Are you What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back. Give to new video, guys, and again, my video for guests. My name is David, and welcome to the best video. So, they're going to be reacting to the Prophet on Judgment Day. Mm. Mm. The Prophet Judgment Day, what's going to happen? So, this is going to be my first time checking this out. This was actually recommended for us to check out. You know how I do it? We'll talk less where I do it. Yes, more. Let's get into it. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of judgment you will reach a position of misery people will be miserable people will some of them will be saddened people would have given up hope in some ways and then the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the long hadith the people will gather each other and they will begin to question what's going to happen to us and so they will remember the prophets. Let's go to the prophets. Let's ask them. Let's come to them and ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment, the hisab, the accountability. Prophet said, in this life I had a dua. And this dua, I kept it. Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me was that, Oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam. And they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar. You are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. Inni akhafu mithla alladhi takhafu. I fear the same thing you are fearing. Inni asaytu Rabbi. I disobeyed my Lord once. Inna Rabbi qad ghadiba ghadaban lam yaghdab mithlahu qad. Today my Lord is in a state of anger which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father no, that is of mankind. No yeah. Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh alayhi salam will say the same thing. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me. Go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets. Till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day yeah. would also respond in the same way. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers everywhere. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore, today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got to an answer to this. I've got something I have to answer to. The people took me as a God. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Lest laha. Finally, we reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day. That I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. 
As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, go to whoever you used to follow. Our Rasul Sallallahu says, when the people come to me and they say, please, Ishfa' lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin. I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, ana laha. He says, Thumma asjudu li rabbi sajda. I prostrate to my Lord such a prostration, so prolonged. Only Allah knows how long, Masha Allah, and asjud, as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood. And I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life. I've never used these words in praising him and calling out to him in my sujood. And then my ummah who followed me, they will prostrate behind me. A caller will call out, prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. In Muslim, the book of Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu says, my Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called a saq. The Muslims, the believers will see it and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'ithnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, Fala yastati'oon. They will not be able to prostrate. And the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. As for the Prophet Sallallahu and his Ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, Fi yanzilullah. On that day, Allah will descend. How will he descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. And Allah says in the Quran, on that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. Eight of them carrying Allah's throne. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sky, the worldly sky, this universe that we see, compared to the second sky, because there are seven skies Allah created, is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the second compared to the third is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the third compared to the th fourth is like a ring thrown into a desert. And so on until you reach the seventh. And the seventh compared to the arsh, to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a drop in one hadith, like a drop in the ocean. And there is Allah's kursi, which is above the throne. And the kursi encompasses the whole skies and the earth. It's even larger than the arsh, than the throne. That will be brought on the day of judgment. And then Allah will say, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Irfa' ra'sak, lift your head, was'al tu'ata, and ask for anything, I will give you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifts his head. And the only thing he will say is, Ya Rabbi, Ummati, Ummati. O oh my Lord, Save my nation, save my nation. The ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And he will know them. The Rasul ﷺ will know his ummah which he interceded for. How will he know them? When the Prophet ﷺ was saying, I will be awaiting for you at the Hawd, he said, follow my sunnah and stick to it. What I am on and my companions, stick to it. And I will be waiting for you there. And I will call you and say, come and drink from the fountain. Prophet said, You will drink from it. A drink that you will never, ever be thirsty after that again. Thirst as in 
the quenching of thirst which brings you to fatigue. That's the thirst we're talking about. You will never be thirsty like that ever again. And you will enjoy it. This fountain on the day of judgment, he says, it will be colored like milk. You'll say, this is like milk, but it's not like the milk of this earth. It will taste sweeter than honey, but not like the honey of this earth. And you will have cups of gold and silver. Some of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, we ask Allah to let us drink from that. I mean, will drink by themselves. And some of them, the Prophet ﷺ will give them to drink from his blessed hand. Before the Prophet ﷺ died, he went to his final visit to the grave of the Shuhada, of the martyrs, and to Al Baqiyah. And he made dua for them, and then he said the following words The only thing I will miss of not seeing is that I will die not seeing my brethren. Mm -hmm. And then Abu Hurairah said, Ya Rasulullah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik. Are we not your brothers already? Look, we're here, you can see us. He said, Ya Abu Hurairah, you are my companions. Yes, and you are my brothers. But the brethren I'm talking about, they, don't, they are not here. They are the ones who believed in me and followed me, but never saw me, never mm -hmm. met me. We ask Allah that we are them. Amen. He said, what will happen? He said, I'm going to meet them on the day of judgment and I will call them to drink from the fountain. He said, How will you know them and you have never seen them? He said, if I told you that a person had many horses and some of them were very black in color and among them there were horses that were striped with white on their faces and on their arms and on their legs and on their tails and I said, well, isn't he able to tell the difference between these horses and those? He said, yes, very easy. He said, on a day of judgment, my ummah will come to me مُحَجَّلِينَ They will come striped with noor, brightness, noor on their faces. This is what it meant. means, on their faces and on their arms and on their legs. How did I know this? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ This is because the effect of the wudu they used to make. What does that mean? It means they used to pray. They used to prepare mm. for prayer. They were purified by making wudu. Isbagh al wudu, he said. Isbagh al wudu. They used to not only make wudu, they used to make their wudu proper. So they would go a little bit beyond their knee, their elbows, a little bit beyond their ankles. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, after that day, everyone I saw, I used to say to them, whoever wants to drink from the fountain of the Prophet, extend your wudu. Like make it better. Oh. Make it better. Or do it like the way Bilal radiallahu anhu used to make it. Before every prayer he used to make wudu, whether he still had it or didn't. There will be people whom the Prophet when he intercedes for them, they will be turned away from the fountain. See, there will be angels standing there. And the people will rush to that fountain. They will see that this is salvation. So some of them will be prevented by the angels. And they will look like Prophet ﷺ will say, are they from my ummah? And some of them the Prophet ﷺ used to know from this life. And you'll say, they are from my ummah. And Allah will say to him, they changed after you. They changed after you. Meaning they changed your sunnah after you. The innovators, the ones who apostated, they changed. And the Prophet ﷺ will say, sorrowness and depth of hellfire for those who changed my sunnah after me, those who changed my way after me. My brothers and sisters, this is when, at this point, this is when the sky above us will be filled with darkness. We look up and what do we see? We see our books, our records. Hmm. This was a lot. Uh, it looks like a twist. Yeah. In some way, in some way, it looks like a twist. It looks like a twist. You know, in the Bible, um, Revelation, uh, there's also about end time, judgment day, and uh, Muhammad was not in there. So 
missing him. Yeah, when they like one prophet, go to the next prophet, mm. one prophet, go to the next prophet. When he gets Muhammad, Muhammad he asks for God to save the his nations. Mm. So it's kind of like different from what I've been taught. A totally different. Revelation in the Bible scares me every time, so I hardly read that scripture. Like the entire verse itself. Unless I'm in church, like by Pastor say turn into Revelation, I will check. But the entire scripture, the Revelation as a whole okay. scares me a lot. Because what is being written there, the burnt fire, the torments, the days, that, the horses, like a lot of things. So, hearing them describing it in this manner, it's it's totally different from what I was being taught. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I know some things over here do not relate. Most things over here do not relate. I was not taught of this. And especially the one you will never be thirsty again drink all this water. I think it was said by Jesus. So it's kind of like different for me why I was hearing this from here. Um, I can't go, go check my revelation again, go through, go read through it again. Um, that scripture itself, revelation, I've read from Genesis going, going, going. The Vaticals. Psalm, Isaiah, Proverbs. Matthew, Proverbs, John, I've read different scriptures. But Revelation itself, the judgment, the end time, guys, that part is scary. It's very, very terrifying, guys. But I'm definitely going to check it, go check it out and read because I need to know more. I need to learn. And I can't just avoid that scripture. Because I need to, because now I have more things to say about this end time because mm. I really don't read Revelation, so I don't really have much things. But I know some things that was being taught in church do not correspond with this for me. Mm. So I'm going to go check it out, go read it out, and clarify it myself. And maybe I'll get back to you guys on my conversation. What do you think? This is so beautiful. Watching him talk about the end time, even though it's different from our religion, you see, you see them talking and explaining about how the end times will be. And I feel we should all be appreciative for who we are right now. We should thank God for bringing us here and obey his words, obey his commandments, follow his path, the path he has given unto us. So that when the end time comes, we won't be running head to scatter, looking for a way to hide or trying to beg God for forgiveness at that ending point. I think we should try to live holy now. We have yeah. time. We have we have the time right now. The only time that you can change is right here on earth. That's true. If you don't resist this, this judgment, then there's nothing you can do about it. They will judge you based on what you have done on earth. This is a test. Just like going to school and you don't read throughout uh, let me see, your test is on the 14th week of your school. You don't read throughout the first to the 14th week. On the 14th week, what you have done, that's what you you read, absolutely nothing. You're going to present it there. If it's empty, it will be empty right there and you get a zero. True. So if you have done absolutely nothing on earth, if you get there on judgment day, you will be judged based on what you've done on earth. And if you've done absolutely nothing, there's still judgment for you. And hell is not anywhere that any of us should be at all. Just pray that God give us the strength and help us to be able to overcome temptations and the worldly way of life, to be able to focus more on Him and know the true meaning of life and focus on His way, His path that He has blessed for us. Just pray God guide us. That's me I'm loyal for some watching this also, hearing about the judgment day. How was your reaction? Give us a thumbs up. Share this with us. Maybe us can comment down below in the comment section what you think about this video as a whole entirely. You know how it is, guys. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers. Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales all